which Sony camera should you get for wildlife? The A7R4 or the A9? Hello everybody, I'm Juan Pons. If there's one question that I get more than any other is which of these two cameras between the A7R4 and the A9 should you get for wildlife photography? And the question is not that easy to answer. Um, well, if I had to give you a really quick answer, I would have to say it depends. And let me go through why I think that is. First things first. I want to make sure that you understand that I am a practical person. I am not married or wedded to any one system. I use a system that best feels my need and offers me what I perceive to be the most. And today that system is Sony and that's why I talk about so much about Sony. I used to shoot Canon for a very long time and I switched to Sony, I don't know, four years ago and I've been very, very happy with it. Pretty Please, please trust me, no one system is perfect. Sony has its deficiencies, but I believe, you know, when you consider everything that's out there, the advantages of the Sony system overweigh any of the drawbacks. Okay, let's first take a look at the pros and cons of both cameras. So, the Sony a7R4, actually both of these have really good extensive uh, pros to them. But to me, one of the biggest pros of the a7R4 is the 61 megapixel, um, which also gives you an APS-C crop of about 26 megapixels. Now, a lot of people say, I don't need that many megapixels. And you're right, a lot of us don't need that many megapixels. But what the 61 megapixels gives you is the ability to crop an image substantially and still have plenty of uh, pixels left to be able to show the image or print it or whatnot. So yes, I may not necessarily need all those megapixels when I'm not cropping an image, but you know, when I need to crop that image and I need that little bit of extra reach, having that 61 megapixel is very advantageous. Now, you know, one thing I'm going to digress here for a second. A lot of people say, well, you know, why don't you use the APS-C mode in the camera? That's a great feature. Um, and I never ever use the APS-C mode in the camera. By the way, the APS-C mode in the camera means that the, automatic, the camera automatically crops the image to what it would look like if it was an APS-C crop sensor. And the reason I never do that is because I can do that in post. I can do that in Lightroom, for example. And then I have a lot more flexibility. Um, if I were to set the camera on APS-C mode, the camera automatically crops that image and, um, and just shows me part of the frame that I, that I was looking at through my viewfinder. Um, so, now the one advantage that the APS-C mode gives you is that it, it results in a smaller file, but that's about it. Otherwise, I see no reason whatsoever to shoot an APS-C mode. I just shoot it in 61 megapixels and crop after the fact. Okay, so that's number one reason or number one pro of the, A, the A7R Mark IV, it's a 61 megapixel. To me, the better image quality, and this is somewhat subjective, but not entirely. Um, I believe that the, A, the A7R III Mark III and Mark IV, both of them have substantially better image quality over the A9. And some of the testing that some of the labs have done bears this out. If you look at, for example, the DxO mark ratings, the A7R4 and the A7R3 have deeper dynamic range than the A9, and that bears that out you know, easily when I see it. Additionally, these cameras, even though they have more pixels, in my opinion, they have a better low light performance, and DxO also bears that out. Um, meaning that if I'm shooting at high ISOs, you know, my image quality is going to be better with the A7R 3 or the A7R 4 compared to the A9. So all in all, image quality is better, in my opinion, on these two cameras, the A7R Mark IV and the A7R Mark III over the A9. And for me, image quality is almost 
you know, the num well, it is the number one priority over everything, but just that alone makes this camera that much better than the A9. Now, the A7R Mark IV has better ergonomics over the A9. And I'm, I'm not addressing the A9 Mark II. I'm going to talk about that a little later on. Um, but the, A, the, the um, A7R Mark IV has definitely better ergonomics, a better grip. Um, but most importantly for me is a better and more responsive autofocus button on the back, the back button focus. Um, that to me is super, super important. Okay, let's look at some of the other ones. The A7R Mark IV has a lockable exposure dial. Uh, for me, this is not a big deal, but I know a lot of folks complain about the exposure dial on the A7R Mark III as well as the A9 not being able, not being lockable. And when people are carrying the camera, they bump up that dial and they change the exposure compensation inadvertently. With the A7R Mark IV, you can lock that um, and uh, make sure that that dial does not turn whatsoever. Really, really nice. Um, also, this camera, the A7R Mark IV, has better weather sealing over the A9. Um, it has an amazing electronic viewfinder. The best, the best that I've ever seen, the best out there, the best over the A9 Mark II, even. This camera just has an incredible electronic viewfinder, more, megapic, more pixels, better looking, better quality, better everything. Um, I can't say enough about the viewfinder in the A7R Mark IV. Um, another big advantage is that it has dual UHS slots. Again, the A9 Mark II has that, but I'm gonna address that in a little bit. This has two UHS II slots, meaning you can put two of the very fast cards, like these um, uh, Sony UHS II cards that can read at 300 megabit megabytes per second and write at 299 megabytes per second. Very, very important to get the most out of these cameras so that you can offload those buffers as quickly as possible. Now, not all is rosy with the A7R Mark IV. There are some cons to this camera, some things that I don't like. Um, I think that the autofocus system, while it's an excellent autofocus system, once you use the autofocus system on the A9, you're kind of spoiled and you go back to the autofocus system on the A7R Mark IV and you are somewhat disappointed. Um, so I much prefer the autofocus system on the A9. I think anybody would. I wish this camera had the autofocus system on the A9, but it does not. Unfortunately, that's what we have to live with. It also has a significantly slower um, drive or frames per second than the A9. This can only go up to 10 frames a second when you're in the high plus mode. Um, I wish it was a little faster, but yeah, I'll take the 10 frames per second. It's, it's not bad, it's not that slow. Okay, that's it for the A, A7R Mark IV. Let's talk about the A9. Let's talk about the pros of the A9. And <laughs> number one is the autofocus system. The autofocus system on the A9 is absolutely remarkable super fast, super accurate. Um, it can track animals like nothing else that's out there, just incredibly good. And now with the addition of the animal eye focus, animal eye tracking that both of these cameras have, but the A9 is definitely better. It is a, uh, just an amazing camera for wildlife photography. The other advantage, huge advantage that the A9 has, has is the no blackout screen. At no time does your screen blank out. Now, the A7R Mark IV and the A7R Mark III have a, a mode that's kind of a no blackout screen. What happens is that the quality of the image in the viewfinder, not on the raw file, the image in the viewfinder, um, degrades. It's kind of like a black and white, and there's a little bit of lag to it, um, but it's there. The A9 absolutely no compromises at all. It's actually, I kind of joke that it's actually like uh, like a video game because as you press that shutter and you're taking images, you know, you can't hardly tell that the camera's taking images because the, the um, image on the viewfinder doesn't flicker, it doesn't change, it's real time, just absolutely remarkable. Very, very, very fast and very good. And that blackout screen is incredibly important when you're tracking fast moving subjects. It allows you to very much, much more easily track those subjects because at no point in time do you lose sight of them um, like you do with a DSLR. Just incredible performance. 
the drive speed on this camera. You have user selectable drive speed. You have 20 frames a second, you have 10, or you have five frames a second. 20, in most cases, I find it to be a little too much, um, unless you're shooting birds in flight, very really fast birds in flight. Um, and I'll show you some examples in a little bit, uh, coming up pretty soon. So most of the time I'm shooting at 10 frames a second. I do wish I had a 15 frame a second uh, mode, but you know, you can't have everything. Okay, cons on the A9. Only one UHS slot. Just like the A7R 3 this camera has just one UHS slot and is the bottom slot on the camera. Kind of disappointing, um, especially for a camera that has 20 frames a second. You would have thought that from the get-go, they would have put two H UHS 2 slots into this camera so that you could write very fast or just as fast to either slot one or slot two. Um, not sure why Sony did that, but they corrected that with the A9 Mark II that we're going to talk about in, in, in a minute. It only has 24 megapixels, and this is probably one of my biggest uh, complaints about this camera. 24 megapixels is good for an image if you're doing no cropping whatsoever, but I do cropping for probably 99% of my images, so I always end up with you know, smaller files than I like. I wish this was at least like 36 megapixels, like the A7R um, Mark II, or Mark III, I should say. Um, so that is my biggest complaint about the camera, the 24 megapixels. Um, it's got good ergonomics. I actually like the ergonomics on this camera. They're not as good as they are on the Mark IV camera, on, on the uh, 7R Mark IV or the A9 Mark II. Um, especially the AF button is kind of little and hard to find, especially if you're shooting with any kind of gloves. It's almost impossible to find with gloves. Um, so you're going to have to go kind of by memory. So I do wish the ergonomics were a little better on this camera. Um, and then the other one is that it has a decent viewfinder. It's just nowhere near as good as the um, A7R Mark IV. And like I said before, once you get used to the autofocus on the A A9, it's hard to use the autofocus on the A7R Mark IV. And, and conversely, once you get used to the viewfinder on the A7R Mark IV, it's kind of hard to downgrade to the viewfinder on the A9. Okay. Oh, and the last thing, I almost forgot. The weather ceiling on this, it's eh, it's not that great. It's actually, um, you know, a lot of people have complained about it, especially down on the bottom uh, battery door. Uh, water can seep in through there pretty easily. So the weather ceiling on this camera is really kind of mediocre um, compared to the A7R Mark IV, which has a much, much better weather ceiling system. Okay. I've talked a lot about the Mark, the Sony A9 Mark I, but there is a Sony A9 Mark II. And the reason I didn't talk about the Sony A9 Mark II is because, you know, for most of us, the advantages of the A7R Mark II, or so A7, A9, these numbers are getting really confusing. The A9 Mark II um, are kind of small, especially for the price difference for what you can get at regular A9 now. Um, Let's talk a, a little bit about the difference. Dual UH, UH, UHS 2 slots. Again, um, I, talk, I complained about that on this camera, on the um, A9, and, and this is a great addition to the A9 Mark II. Um, it has better ergonomics. The ergonomics are exactly the same as the A7R Mark IV. Just like the A9 matches the ergonomics of the uh, A7R Mark III, the A9 Mark II matches the ergonomics of the A7R Mark IV. So definitely better ergonomics, better back button focus button on the back. Absolutely much improved over the A9. Um, and again, the A9 Mark II also has better weather sealing, just like the A7R Mark IV. Um, this is another advantage. The rest of the features are features that were added really to uh, satisfy uh, people in the press. Um, for example, it has a, 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 a enhanced connect network connectivity. It does have a feature where you can actually record a little memo to images um, and a few other features like that that are really not all that useful to us as wildlife photographers. They're more used to the press corps, sports photographers that are going out and shooting for a lot of the press services. 
Um, so then the question is, is the price difference, um, you know, enough? These three features that are really critical for us as wildlife photographers, the dual, dual UHS two slots, the better ergonomics, and the better weather ceiling, are these three features enough for you to praise the price difference between the two? If they are, by all means, get the A9 Mark II. Just keep in mind that you're not gaining any more image quality, you're not gaining better autofocus performance, you're not getting any more frame rates. Is basically all the other features are exactly the same as the A9. Um, none of the image capturing features of the camera have been improved whatsoever between the A9 Mark I and the A9 Mark II. So it's really a personal decision which of the two cameras um, you want to go with. I still have my original A9, and for me, it wasn't compelling enough to upgrade to the A9 Mark II. And the reason for that is because I consider my A9 as a secondary camera. So I'm going to talk about that in a little bit um, as to my opinion between both cameras and why um, I would recommend one camera over the other for most wildlife photographers. But before we do that, what I wanted to do was show you some images to demonstrate the autofocus systems on this camera and what you can capture with these cameras with the, uh, with the uh, autofocus system. And I'm going to start by showing you the awesome autofocus system of the A9 through some images. Um, you know, what's funny about the A9 and the autofocus is that it's, it's, you feel almost like cheating because the autofocus is so good. It, it locks on on these birds in flight and captures them and, um, and focuses them so precisely. Even when these birds are flying very, very fast and over changing backgrounds. Um, you can see here on all these images of the gannets and the puffins, how these images are super sharp and, uh, and these animals actually fly incredibly fast. So I feel like with this camera, I was able to capture a lot of these images a lot easier than I would have been able to capture with uh, any other camera that's out there. I'm going to show you a real example here because this is just going to blow you away. Something you don't see in most other cameras. And this is an image sequence of, um, macaw, uh, of a macaw in flight. And I'm going to go through these very quickly and you can see there are a bunch of different images here. We're talking about uh, 22 images and out of those 22 images only one of them is out of focus and if you notice those images the background is changing constantly yet that A9 held on to that macaw and you were able to get all 22 of those images in a little bit over a second because I was shooting in high speed mode there uh, 20 frames a second and was able to get all of those images except for one in perfect focus. Just incredible. I have not ever used a camera that could do anything like this. Now, I'm gonna show you some images with lesser cameras. You know, you can, with practice and luck, um, make images with fast, fast action move, uh, uh, animals or fast action subjects, fast moving subjects, and still get that critical focus. What that means is that you're going to get the percentage of images in focus versus out of focus is going to be less than you are with the autofocus system on the A9. All these images you see here were captured with the A7R Mark IV, A7R Mark III. Um, I think I have even a uh, 65, A6500 in here, as well as a Canon 7D Mark II. Um, so you can make great images even though you don't have the great and fast autofocus system of the A9. It is still very possible. It just takes a lot more practice, a lot more patience, and with the realization that you are, your, your keepers, your rate of keepers is not gonna be as high as it is with something like the A9. Um, now, what does this all mean? Well, my opinion, is that if you can only afford one camera out of these two, there is no question in my mind that it should be the A7R Mark IV. Now, this is for us uh, wildlife photographers that uh, are shooting just about everything that's out there, any kind of wildlife, especially big wildlife, uh, slow-moving wildlife. Um, 
you know, I think the advantages of the A7 Mark IV outweigh um, the advantages of the A9 in general, you know, wildlife photography. The dynamic range, low light performance, the autofocus system is in most cases good enough or actually very good, um, just not insanely good like the A9. Um, all of those things, I think, tip the scales towards the A9, A7R Mark IV. Um, now, if you're really heavy into birds in flight, BIFs, or fax action photography, like motorcycles or car racing, um, things like that, then definitely get the A9 or the A9 Mark II. Um, just keep in mind some of the cons that I talked about earlier, specifically the, uh, uh, the 24 megapixels and the decreased image quality over the A9. So it really is based on your priorities. What's most important to you? Um, the image quality, the high megapixels, you know, versus the autofocus system. Now, a happy medium, if you will, that you could approach is that you get an A7R Mark IV for, you know, the, all the uh, general uh, photography, wildlife photography that you do, and then you get an A6600, um, which is a small crop sensor camera for your fast action birds in flight type photography. The A6600 has the same autofocus system as the A9, incredibly fast, incredibly good, shoots 24 megapixels. The image quality, unfortunately, is going to suffer even more than the A9. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, it is a crop sensor camera, so another uh, thing to keep in mind as well, which may actually be a positive for wildlife photography. But versus the A9, the D9 Mark II is a full frame camera. So again, something else to keep in mind. So, my personal wish list, okay, having said that, um, is for a camera that has the resolution and the image quality and the ergonomics of the A7R Mark IV plus has the autofocus system of the A9 and can shoot about 15 frames a second. With all those points, that would be my absolute perfect camera but no camera out there is perfect. This just doesn't happen. You know, these cameras are compromised between the technology, the price, and all this stuff. That's what these camera manufacturers have to do to come up with a product. So for me today, between these two cameras, the A9 or the A7 or Mark IV, it's a no contest. The A7 or Mark IV is going to be my primary camera because of all the things that it gives me over the A9. Well, if you have enjoyed this video, I please ask you to subscribe to my channel and click on that little bell to be notified when I post new videos. And also, I ask you to check my workshops. I have a bunch of workshops out there going out to Costa Rica, Yellowstone, Cuba, out to out West and Alaska, and I have more coming up. Um, if you want to learn more about the Sony system and you want to have some hands-on instruction, plus get to shoot in some incredible locations around the world. Um, I would encourage you to check my workshops and I hope to see you in one of those. Until next time, thank you for watching and take care.